Emerson Nangagwa has been sworn in for a second term as Zimbabwe's president. This is despite objections about election results and calls for a rerun after ZANU PF was declared the winner uh, with nearly 53% of the vote. At the same time, the main opposition party, Citizen Coalition for Change, has confirmed that it won't seek uh, to overturn the results in court. President Sir Ramaphosa and several other heads of state and dignitaries attending the swearing ceremony uh, in Harare today. Uh, now, Nangagwa's inauguration uh, comes amid allegations of human rights abuse, torture uh, uh, of opposition party members and arbitrary arrests. For more on this, we're joined now by political analyst Professor Ibo Mandaza. Prof, good to have you and thank you very much uh, for coming on this evening at uh, the National Sports Stadium. Uh, it's heads of state, some congratulations, hugs and so forth. At the State House, there was a luncheon that was uh, also uh, had or hosted by President Emerson Nangagwa. Painting a picture overall of a successful inauguration is what they would like to address it as. What is happening on the periphery of that? Well, I think it's uh, largely a very subdued event altogether. Um, as subdued as the day after the elections, when the ZEC announced the final position in which Emerson Nangagwa has been declared the winner. It was almost like a funeral throughout the week in Narare. And even though they managed to fill up the stadium with the usual attractions of food and soccer, uh, it was very a very uh, subdued occasion in general, yes. Uh, if also not a little contrived in the sense that it was very hurried, and once to once that's why it was so hurried, and a very poor turnout in terms of um, heads of state, only three out of 54 heads of state in Africa. Um, although one must also add that many of the governments were represented by uh, uh, junior officers, but all the same. One does want to say that there was a complete boycott uh, as such as the uh, opposition and some of the media is suggesting. Yeah, yeah. President so, Sir Ramaphosa yes. attending being looked at as uh, almost a, a representative member of, 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 of SADC. Does it hold any significant weight that he was there? I think not so much uh, as uh, Sir Ramaphosa in his, in his uh, capacity as business. Uh, but I think more in terms of South Africa, uh, the powerhouse, the hegemonic power in the in the region. But I think uh, Ramaphosa did explain when he was questioned about congratulating uh, Nangagwa last week uh, uh, against the backdrop of a very controversial election. He explained that that's normal protocol. And I'll say that it's also normal protocol that he should attend the inauguration. But he, he implied uh, very strongly that uh, this did not, does not preempt uh, a, a consideration of the SADC uh, observer report, which, which, which the report has just been finalized this morning before the inauguration. That report is on the table, and SADC has to deal with it. Does this in any way minimize the the authority of SADC or undermines, maybe let me use that word, the authority of SADC in terms of having a say on how member states run their affairs? Uh, what are you talking about? Sir Ramaphosa's attendance? No, no, no. The inauguration, the inauguration itself going ahead despite, of course, SADC's report uh, on, on the credibility of, of, or, or, or on the fairness of these elections. Okay, so well, one might argue that uh, the hurried inauguration uh, is intended to preempt the static report, yes. Uh, but I, I would argue on the basis of precedence, uh, we had a similar situation in 2008, if you remember. Um, Mugabe was said to have lost the election, they contrived a runoff, and the runoff was boycotted by the opposition, and... SADC did not recognize the runoff result, uh, including South Africa itself. 
But uh, if you remember, Tabombeki flew into Harare on his way to Egypt to the AU summit. Mugabe was sworn in at midnight <laughs> uh, by the Chief Justice and then joined Mbeki on the plane to Egypt um, in, a, in a would-be fait accompli. But as you know, it wasn't a fait accompli. Uh, Sadek went on to consider the report and the messy situation that there was, including the report uh, by the generals, South African generals, on the violence that took place, in which 300 people were killed, and, uh, and then followed the GNU, as you know. One might argue we have a similar set of circumstances now. We have a very, very negative report on the election by Sadek itself, the first ever, and all the other observer reports, the Carter Center, the EU, uh, the AU itself, all returned a, a, a negative verdict on the election in, Zan, in Rari, in my view, in my view, uh, correctly so. So, uh, we expect uh, that Sadek is now seized with the report. There have been discussions over the weekend between the heads of state of Sadek, and to the extent that some didn't turn up for the inauguration, that suggests a bit of an ease with Arare um, on their part. But certainly we expect, in terms of Sadek protocols, uh, and in terms of the provision of the organ on politics, state, uh, defense, and security, that SADC will have to have a discussion on the report, and indeed don't rule out the possibility of a summit in the next few days, a SADC summit to, to consider that report. How, how would you... Uh... And, that, and, and that might, might in fact, reverse matters in Harare uh, uh, quite easily, although that's unlikely. But what you could have is um, a new arrangement, such as we had in uh, in uh, 2008, 2009. And as you know, we have put out a petition in which we are more or less anticipating, or have anticipated this kind of standoff, uh, 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 calling on SADC to uh, mediate and negotiate for a transitional government in Zimbabwe, which trans transitional government would the responsibility of effecting the requisite reforms, which have been outstanding for 20 years, electoral reforms um, in particular, uh, but also political reforms generally. Yeah. Political reforms, yeah. I mean, we have in Zimbabwe uh, uh, a very curious situation where only Zimbabwe in the whole region treats the opposition as, as an enemy <laughs> to be vanquished to be destroyed if necessary. Yeah. And uh, it's a very unhealthy political culture which has to be addressed. So let, 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 let's courage. talk about that a little bit. I mean, the Amnesty International, I see, reporting, uh, and we have no reason to doubt the veracity of their reports, uh, that there are attacks uh, against opposition party activists. There are threats against them uh, and those that are trying to, to organize uh, peaceful protests. How would you... Uh, analyze or even describe the political climate uh, that, is, that is currently uh, uh, prevailing in, in Zimbabwe? Well, in the first instance, uh, it would suggest that the so-called uh, uh, victory by Emerson Mnangagwa's Pyrrhic victory, in a, if, if he indeed had won a free, fair, and credible election, why, why, why is a state attacking members of the opposition? I've just seen a young man was abducted on, uh, on, on Saturday night. He's lying in hospital right now. Uh, last week, another one was beaten up, left for dead. And so it goes on, you know, and in general, why would a state or a president who has, would be won the election, and you know, very why does he allow his state agents to pursue the opposition in the, man, in the manner in which you were, uh, in uh, Amnesty International, as described. So we, we know in many ways we expected this kind of uh, preemptive, I call it preemptive, because I think there was all the fear in Harare that the opposition might just stage protests such as they did in, in two, 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 2018. 
and that the country might descend into um, mass unrest. So, but it does it does, it does speak to a, a very tense situation in Harare on the back of would be uh, inauguration of MSM Nangagwa. The move by the opposition, I suppose, not to pursue the judicial review of these uh, uh, outcomes, uh, but to, to, to rather rely on, on SADC and, and the outcomes of, of the SADC uh, process. Again, uh, issuing out that statement, uh, outlining their reasons why they're not going for, for the judiciary. Uh, but key amongst it is that the judiciary is captured, uh, pretty much. Is that in line with what you would have expected they would do? Yes, almost, almost definitely. But I think the, uh, the, the more cogent argument is that if they had gone to court and the, and the courts throughout the application, uh, that would ipso facto, uh, render Emerson Nangagwa a legitimate, uh, president, so to speak. So in, 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 uh, Deciding not to go to court, it will appear that they have withheld uh, legitimacy uh, for Emerson Nangagwa. And indeed, if one might also argue that a court decision in Nangagwa's favor would also more or less preempt the SADC, whatever SADC intends to do, uh, in that SADC would be faced with a, a would be fait accompli. So I think Arare, uh, I mean the government in Arare has been trying to get that fate accomplished, but in vain so far, yes. Prof, appreciate your time. Let's see you there for tonight. That's political analyst Professor Ibo Mandazade uh, on uh, the inauguration of uh, uh, President Emerson Nangagwa in Harare earlier today. Let's